Hello and welcome to this tutorial and in this tutorial we'll be learning how you could add properties to your widgets. Now in the previous tutorial we have learned how you could add widgets like the simple button onto your Android activity screen and we have also run the application in the emulator. So what I've done is that instead of closing the emulator I've just minimized it so that it takes less time for the computer to load up and boot up the emulator once again. So you could also do the same. So instead of just exiting out of your emulator, you could just exit out of your app and then minimize the emulator. So when you're running the emulator for one more time after modifying your code, so it will take a relatively shorter span of time to load up the emulator. Now what we are going to do in this tutorial is that we are going to define some properties for the button which we have created and also we are going to try and change the background color of our activity screen by using some java code. So now in this case as we want to change the color the next thing which we want to do in the java code is that we want to import a package which is called as color. So we go right ahead and we import color. So to import color we type import android dot graphics dot color and that is going to import the color package for us. Now the next thing which we want to do is that we want to set the background color of the layout. So in order to do that we go right ahead here and in order to change the layouts color we type my layout which is nothing but the name of our layout then we give a period or dot operator and then we type set background color which is a method which is used in order to set the color. Now in the parameter section of this what we want to do is that we want to specify the color which we want to use. So let's say we want to change the background color to blue. So in this we type color dot and the desired color which we want. So in this case if we want blue we type blue in capitals and it is going to change the color of the background for us. Now once we are done with this, uh, let's say we want to change the color of the button too. So we do the same with button. So we type the name of button which is my button. Then we type dot set background color and let's say we want to set it to let's say green. So we type color dot green and it is going to set the color for us. Now also we want to mention some text onto the button. So in order to mention text we type my button dot set text. So set text is basically the method which is used in order to set the text of a particular element. So in this case as we want to set the text of the button we specified the button name which is my button. Then we have used the set text method and inside the parameters we specify the text which we want to display. So in double quotes we type let's say click here. Now once this is done, when we switch to this content mail.xml file, uh, you could see that no change appears right over here. But when we run the application, we could notice the change and that is because when we are going to set the layout from here, it is not going to usually show you changes here. Now the main advantage of using Java for creating your interface is that you could dynamically change your interface when you are typing code in Java. For example if you want to change the code in XML so it is good for the applications which are static uh, that is the interface is not going to change that much but if you want to design an application wherein the layout of your application depends upon the preference of a user so in that case we are going to go with the Java code. So coming back to the tutorial we have set the color of the button and we have also set the text of the button. Now once we are done setting the color and the text of the button, the next thing which we want to do is that we want to align these buttons properly. So in order to do that, we go ahead and type the layout's name which is relative layout. So we type relative layout, then we type dot layout params and this is going to be the layout parameter and this we are going to specify the widget which we want to use and then we are going to specify its layout. So we type dot layout params and params stands for parameters. Now the next thing which we need to do is we want to mention the widget for which we are using this. So let's name it as button details as we are going to set the layout for buttons. So we type button details and then we type this equals again we type relative layout and then again we use the dot layout params and inside the parameters we want to set the actual parameters which we are going to use. So basically what we are trying to achieve here is that we are going to place the button in the relative layout by using some parameters. Now in this case we want to use wrap content and wrap content is basically used 
when we want the container to wrap along our elements so basically when we are done with this we type relative layout dot layout dot layout params dot wrap content and this is going to wrap the content for us and then again we are going to type relative layout dot layout params dot wrap content and make sure that you end this with a semicolon and also make sure that as we are creating a new object of the parameters you make sure that you specify the new keyword here and as you specify new here you could see that all the errors are automatically gone now if you don't understand why we have written this line of code here uh, so basically we have written this just for the sake of adding a rule which is called as button details to our button right over here so that this button is specified in a proper location now what we are going to do is that we are going to add these button details and we are going to specify a proper layout for our button so we go down here and then we type button details then we give a dot operator and then we use the add rule in order to add the layout to it so in this case the first parameter which we want to specify is going to be the location so in order to specify the location we type the name of our layout so in this case we are using relative layout so we type relative layout dot as we want to specify it send in center so we type center horizontal and center horizontal is nothing but it is going to place the button horizontally in the center so we type center horizontal and also we want to make sure that we have placed this button in the center vertically as well so we go down here and again we add the rule so we type button details dot add rule and this line of code is going to be the same so we type relative layout dot center but in this case we are going to type in center vertical so that horizontally as well as vertically this button is aligned in the center so now once this is done the next thing which we do is that we go to the layout right here and we have specified the add view so we simply cut it from this position we go ahead and come here and we paste the code here and one more thing which we want to add to this button is going to be the button details which we have created right over here so you make sure that you go ahead here and then you type in the button details so we type button details right over here so now let's go through the code once again in order to have a proper understanding of what we have done so basically in the previous tutorial we have created objects of relative layout for specifying the layout and we have also created a button object which we are going to use now the next thing which we did is we as we wanted to set the background color of the layout we have typed my layout dot set background color and the set background color method is basically used in order to change the background color and we did the same with the my button and then finally in order to add some text to my button we have typed my button dot set text and we have specified the text here now this line of code right here is a bit confusing and that is because it is basically a rule in order to set the layout so basically we have created a rule and we have named it as button details and then as we are using the relative layout we have specified relative layout and inside the parameters of relative layout we have basically set the parameters to wrap content now wrap content is used because we want to fit the layout in such a way that it wraps the content that is it wraps the widget which are specified into it now the next thing which we did is that basically we want to set the position of the button in center horizontally as well as the position of the button in the center vertically so we have specified these two lines of code here and then finally we have added this view or we have added the button along with the button details to our layout so now in order to check the output of our program we save the code and when we run it as our emulator is already running we select the running emulator and click ok so as you could see our application is up and running on the emulator and you could notice that the background color has been changed to blue and also the button color is changed to green and we could also notice that the button right here is set in the center horizontally as well as vertically so basically we are successful in writing java code in order to change the background color as well as the button color and also we are successful in setting the button at the center position horizontally as well as vertically so in this tutorial what we have learnt is that how you could use java code in order to add properties to your widgets so basically what we have done is that we have added the property of background color to the layout as well as we have added the property of color to the button and then finally we have added this piece of code right here 
which is nothing but the button details and it is used in order to basically specify the layout and we have used this right over here in order to set the align the button horizontally and vertically in the center so that's it for this tutorial and in the next tutorial we'll be learning how you could add more widgets to your application by typing some java code so thank you very much for watching this tutorial and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial thank you